Welcome to Off the Cut episode 129 for Tuesday, August 19th, 2024. That didn't sound right for some reason, Uh, but it is. Yeah, that's right. And you know what the right place to buy your tools is, right? Can tools. Because if it's in their shop, it's in their shop. What's that mean, Eric? If it's in their shop, it's in their shop. That's what it means. Yeah, it's self-explanatory. I feel like it's self-explanatory yeah. at this point. People yeah. have heard this ad read enough. They know exactly what it means. True. Everything over at GameTools.com is either designed by Jonathan and his team or is thoroughly tested, which means they don't have a pump full of a bunch of crap like uh, junk on Amazon and Alibaba. That's true. Or Temu. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I'm glad you said it correctly. <laughs> Johnson would murder you. If, I know, he said, if he said Timu, it's Temu. <laughs> he takes the pronunciation of that brand very seriously. <laughs> Almost well, as seriously as he uh, takes the Katz Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund yeah, that takes yeah. a portion from every single sale on camtools.com and uses it to put tools in the hands of people who need them. Absolutely. <gasps> yeah. And there's people who need free money from Jonathan, too. That's and right, our patrons. Our patrons. <laughs> oh, sorry, I stepped on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Every single month we give away a 50, well, Jonathan gives away, a $50 yeah. gift card to KM Tools. If you want to be entered to win, all you have to do is sign up on patreon.com slash podcast, and you're automatically entered to win. Yes, you are. Woo! Woo! All right, let's get into the podcast. That's, yeah, okay. Let's Enough hit it. Dude. dude, this is the first time I've like... Well, not sat down, but like just taking a breath today. Yeah, busy. Day, I've been eh? going for twelve hours straight today, man. It's Ooh. Ooh, wow. No, no. So tell me, tell me about it. What was the? Can you or are the, are the mm-hmm. top secret confidential mm-hmm. stuff, or can you talk about this? No, no, we can talk about it. So you guys, I mean, we talked about this last time. I'm moving. We bought a house, right? True, Ooh. true. So, house stuff. Yeah, we close on Friday. Okay. So tonight we have a, a another meeting thing just to make sure everything's all in place and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So we've been doing stuff. We're getting like quotes for painting, quotes for electrical. Well, we haven't gotten them yet, but we've gotten them set up. You've got meetings. There's, yeah. There's tons of legwork with all the, the house buying stuff. And then also we're like packing right so we're getting ready so basically as soon as like the painting is done right you know in there. give it a couple of days to like fully dry and cure and what and yeah, yeah and then we're getting the hell out of here so like our entire living room is just filled with boxes <laughs> and with that comes kind of what we've we've talked about right when we move everyone knows that moving like dismantles your life for I mean, let's be honest, three to five weeks. Like, Yeah, I'd say so. That sounds like a little low to me. I, I can even see eight weeks, four yeah. on either side. But I know a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, like you move in a day and then like the next day, like it's it's all good. It's like, no, you have boxes no all over your place, man. Yeah. And then you have all the stuff you forgot at the old place. You're like, oh, we forgot that closet in the back room. Yeah. And yeah. You have to go back. <laughs> <laughs> so... We have all of of that, right? We're packing stuff up and just being realistic with myself. I know that I'm going to have several weeks that are not productive, right? Yeah. Still having to work the day job, too. So it's like Mm -hmm. basically stuff from the business is going to be on pause. Yeah. So I'm trying to just ramp things up like crazy during the, the next like week or two. I... Filmed an entire YouTube video today and almost finished editing it. So like, wow, wow. yeah, and I, uh, I'm gonna be set up well, but like for the next few days, like, I know it's gonna be crazy, but that's okay. Yeah, because then I'll be able to like take a breather. So it's like, yes, yeah, yeah, work gotcha. your ass off now, so that you can just go. Whew. Totally right. So. I find yeah. a move is a good time to like purge out a bunch of stuff. I don't oh, need anymore. Oh yeah, Dude, True. especially True. with the shop, go through mm-hmm. and be like, "No, I'm not moving this." You well, honestly, that. I'll probably I'll move that. it and then just do my infamous one penny sale on eBay. True, <laughs> true. But then you have to put it in a box, unbox yeah. it on the other side, 
if it's something valuable, if it's above like yeah. a $50 item, sure. If not, <clears throat> I'll just go to the high school, like the local high school. Like, Ooh, uh, that's a good idea. And just donate it there or something like that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because you know, I like a local. That. Lo- oh, yeah. High school's got shop class. They'll for sure take a donation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, if it's that's something like idea. I got a miter saw, like that rigid one with the articulating arms, that's like a mm-hmm. 400 something dollar miter saw. Like, might as well try to sell that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Right? But I don't know. So yeah, it's been it's been a whirlwind over here. You're, get, you're gonna have that new shop there. You're gonna have room for a miter saw. You might want to hold on to that. Are you gonna get a better one? Well, no, I have the the Festool cordless oh, miter saw thing that I really oh, like. Okay, yeah, and yeah, okay. that's great because then you can like lug it around the house or into the backyard and stuff like that. And be totally, to totally. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's got the tool. same capacity as like a a regular full size miter saw. So. Does it take two batteries or one? Two. Two. Okay, that's how they do it. So it lasts pretty long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the DeWalt one that runs on the 60-volt battery. Thing's awesome. I yeah. use it for like a whole day doing trim work. and Right. It's fine. Yeah. But here's the thing that people bitch about cordless tools, especially like a cordless table saw or like a cordless miter saw. Somebody's like, it's not going to last very long. It's like, I mean, if you're just going chop, chop, chop 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 yeah. all day yeah you're probably going to chew through some stuff but also the battery technology now you can recharge these batteries in way faster than you're going to blow through them oh 100 percent. yeah 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 so if you at least have one extra battery or one extra set of batteries you're never yeah. going to run into that issue yeah You'd have to be basically just holding down the trigger continuously to outrun how fast these batteries can oh, charge. Yeah. Right. Because I've got one of yeah. those chargers that does like two at a time. Yeah. And I think it can charge like a five amp hour battery in like 25 minutes. Nice. Like you're not you're no one's working that hard on their tools. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. We're all taking phone breaks, drink breaks, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> hey, you got to readjust break. the camera. You got to set it up. Yeah, you got to text for a few minutes. But enough about me. So uh, before we started, we were making a comment, Zach, about the new desk that you have in the background. And I, I, I want to hear all about the desk. And I also, I think we're going to have a good conversation about this. So t- tell the people about your desk. I got a mega desk. It's the... Uh, what is it? It's 76 feet one way and then five feet the other way. It's an L shaped desk. It's three legs. It's one of those like sit stand desks. So I can like electronically adjust it by pressing a button. It goes up and down. Oh yeah. You hear that nice hum in the background people? Yeah. It's raising up. It's almost taller than me now. Um, so I used to have a couch in the back of my office that I would you know, the, the idea was I could like sit there, I could lay there, I could write out ideas and stuff like that. That never happened. What the couch was, was a spot for me to put garbage. Mm-hmm. It's what it, it was like a resting place. And I was like, this is dumb. If I were to replace the couch with something, I could actually have like a pretty sick workbench here in my office. And before I was using my desk as my workbench. But mm-hmm. problem with that is then it gets really cluttered. It's not actually that much space. So this allows me to have all my tools set out all the time and just gives me a lot more working room. I'm probably going to put another 3D printer up there and of uh, course. maybe some other things. And my thinking is to, for the people watching on the live stream, it is chaotic on it right now. It's just covered in crap. Bad. But yeah, my, plan, my plan is to 3D print a whole bunch of organizers and stuff like that. So the entire top of it will be covered in you know like very specific, meticulously Ooh. designed tool holders and stuff like that and little storage Ooh. bins with all my stuff so now one thing i've noticed and maybe people listening maybe you know this notice this too derek the the couch definitely changed your voice i think yeah. your audio yeah. sounds a little different now you think so i don't sound as much I yeah. was noticing that myself a little bit, and I was like, maybe it's just in my head, but now that you guys hear it. Well, I'm so looking at I your office, and you've just got yeah. all hard surfaces. There's absolutely nothing yeah, to the sound. <laughs> well, actually, if you see, you can see in the background, see those, like, teal panels? Oh, okay. Those, those are, are cool. 
Yeah, those are acoustical, but they're not very big. And then I have also one behind the screen too. So I'm going to need to invest in that when we move. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe I'll get some like more carpets in here or something like that. It's kind of funny to think like the couch wasn't that big. It was like a really yeah. small couch. So it's weird that it's like changed the sound that much. Was it a maybe two just or a three person couch? Uh, I mean, I guess three, a small three, very okay. small three. Yeah. So maybe just put some paneling up behind your monitor and around it because you speak towards that to absorb know, it from bouncing yeah, off true. initially. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm a good no idea. sound engineer, but I heard something along the lines of like corners. I've heard that the too. Lisa's you're supposed to do stuff mm. with. Yeah, I don't. The know. The problem is like I don't want to. I also like a simple space. Like that's like to me, this is like really busy. I don't want to have a bunch of crap on the walls. I but know. Yeah, I think I might have to do it. I think I have some acoustical panels still up in the attic or something like that that I bought for a project and then never used. What if you wrapped them in the same color fabric as your walls? Mm -hmm. Do you think That's... that would be more visually appealing? Maybe, maybe. That's not a bad idea. Mm. But the mm. teal is kind of an accent color to the room. Yeah, yeah. I like the teal color. I actually have another one of those teal panels uh, up in the attic, so maybe I'll get that and bring it down and see if it helps. Because, like, the couch... It's crazy to me how much it's the, it's changed the sound of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad by any means, but it definitely gets a little more echo than usual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I mean, it's yeah. not unbearable. You might notice that when you go to do voiceovers for videos and stuff. I know. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. You might be like, I don't know. You might have to go back to your regular mic. True, true, true. Because I know true. now you just you put the lavalier on, so you have just, a consistent sound between, yeah, on camera talking and voiceover, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe just get a nice big bearskin rug to lay out on whenever you do your voiceovers. Yeah, I, know, I, I actually do have a big. Hold on, let's see if I can show you guys. Uh, I do have a big shaggy rug underneath me there, okay. but uh, right. apparently it's not big not or enough. shaggy enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. you just got to grow it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just got to water it every day. Give it some fertilizer. In ground sprinkler system for it. <laughs> yeah. So tell me more about this desk. This was like a kit, I'm assuming. It was a. Yeah. So I was telling Derek, it came in like two boxes, just the top and the okay. bottom. It's three legs. Uh, one central motor controls it. I got it on Amazon for $500 Canadian. So probably like $350 American. Yeah. Uh, the top of it kind of sucks. It's just like a black, like it's a particle board with like a thin veneer over sure, it. Sure, sure. Um, but so it's I think a workbench, it's, like let it get hacked up, let you spill oil and grease and, and true. all kinds of junk on it and solder on it and like ruin it. Like who cares? True. Yeah, that was kind of my thinking too. I'm, what I might do at some point is get a at least like a sheet of plywood or something that looks a little bit more aesthetic. Yeah, and uh, throw it on top of it. But yeah, this I do. I'm honestly really happy with it for the price. It's actually really stable, like given how much it costs. And yeah, right, right. So, I have, is this your first ever sit stand desk? I had one before, but I never used the standing functionality because it was like my primary desk. Right. So I never really found that I was when I like go to work at my computer, I want to sit down. But I yeah. find when I'm doing soldering and stuff like that and working on things, I much prefer to be standing. I feel that. Yeah. I'm, I'm obviously going to make a new desk when we move. And I've been mm -hmm. thinking a lot about this. <clears throat> so I had one of those. What was it? I don't Maybe you remember this, Derek. The the brand like the first brand that came out that was like targeted towards like corporate office people and it started with a v was it like oh uh, was it vivo v no uh, okay v like, this this company uh, is vivo the one that makes my desk ver ver very desk very v Versa oh desk. yeah that sounds, that, sound that, about sounds, right? that sounds about right vera Vera desk yeah vera desk is a thing i just looked it up yeah okay. yeah i think it's i think it's probably vera desk yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it's right, Veridesk. It's this right, little, yeah. like, tabletop thing that you squeeze these little handles and, like, you set, you know, you set it on top of your, uh, your desk and then, like, it goes to your monitors and stuff like that. I yeah. had one of those when I worked in the office. 
I I would give it a six out of ten. Okay. It was janky. Mm-hmm. And as far as like you would raise once it was in the raised position, your monitors would like wobble and wiggle. Yeah, that was the other problem I had with my old desk is and with it it was decently stable on its own, but then when you had a monitor on an arm, when you yeah. got it to full extension, it was just like any time you touch the desk, it just turned into jiggle fest and it was Yeah. 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 Nobody likes jiggle fest. No. No. Well, no. <laughs> you know. well it depends. Yeah. It's one time. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but I liked the concept when I was like brainstorming something. I found that when I was in a creative space, like mental space, standing up allowed me to kind of like get these ideas out. And whenever I was on calls, I always preferred to be standing up. But then when I was actually like working, like if I was in Excel doing a bunch of math, like stuff like that, I always preferred to be sitting. Huh. Okay. And it was it was just today that I was, you know, I've been hammering stuff out on the computer all day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God, I just need to stand up right now. Like I've been sitting still for such a long period for of time. time. And it's yeah. made me really realize that like I think when I redo my desk when I move, I'm one hundred percent gonna do a sit stand desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Or you know, I don't know what the your office situation is going to be like in your new place, but do what I do, where you have dual desks. You got oh. one for, you know, you have a workbench and then you have a desk. But see, I don't know necessarily if I know if I'll need like a like a workbench per se. You're going to work off your laptop in your office all the time, right? Yeah, well, I'm going to do yeah. what I have now where I plug my laptop into an external monitor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then I also have to have monitors for my day job too. Mm-hmm. So I like the L desk scenario. Yeah, the L desk is nice too. Like just the added storage of it is pretty. Yeah. I've been enjoying it. I've been I feel enjoying like it. I'm gonna go with that, and then I'm definitely gonna take a page out of your book and go for the TV for the monitor. Get like a yeah. like a 32 inch or like 42 yeah. inch 4K TV. Yeah. And it's going to be way better than this just piece of garbage monitors that I'm running my computer off of now. <laughs> but, yeah. So do you think you're going to use this stand feature a lot? I've already, I got it on, what's it, well, today's Monday. I think I got it on, like, Thursday. Okay. I used it all weekend. I used it today all day. I was soldering today. I was doing a bunch of, like, electronics work. And depending on what I was doing for some of it, I was like, okay, it's nice when it's lower. And then I had to do stuff that was really up close. So I raised it all the way. So it was like, basically like I was like working at eye level. I love it. It's great. I have an idea. Okay. I'm thinking about making a sit stand desk, but I want to mask the fact that it's a sit stand desk. And what I mean by that is typically those telescopic legs, visually, Mm -hmm. they're ugly. Yes. I did think about, I thought about making like MDF covers for them. Like telescoping MDF covers. (laughs) One would be attached to the underside of the desk. One would just sit on the floor and then they would slide in and out. Something like that. And you could like paint them out or you could veneer them, whatever you want to do with it. So I had this idea very similar to that but hear me out instead of like the, these covers i make like a drawer system almost like a cabinet that Ooh. and this i'm just i'm just workshopping this so like please yeah, shoot yeah. it down i think i see what you're where your you're cabinet attaches to the bottom of the work surface so mm-hmm. when the, the desk is all the way down at the ground it it's just like cabinets right but when yeah. your desk raises up you still have access to all those cabinets and now the cabinets are just raised, you know, 12 inches or so off the ground, something like sure. that. Sure. So you would, the cabinets would be attached to the underside of the desk, right? I think so. Yeah. The only possible thing and different, so different companies have different weight ratings for yeah. how much they can lift. So that would be my, some of them are pretty low. Like I think some of them are like 120, 140 pounds, um. which is still not bad. But then other companies, I think, uh, 
I think Flexi Spot, and they're always doing ads with YouTubers. Yeah, they I are. Think, <laughs> I think theirs goes up to three hundred, maybe. Because okay. I mean, think of it: if you're gonna put like a, I don't know, a typical desk is probably thirty inches deep, maybe yep. five or six feet wide. Yep. If you're going inch thick oak, that's oh, probably fifty, seventy five yep. pounds. Yep, and then Something you hang like a couple, couple 30, 40 pound cabinets off of it, and it's, uh, it's you could be up there pretty fast. And then all the yeah. stuff you put in the drawers, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let's see. Mm. Flexi Spot says their static load capacity is five hundred and forty or three hundred and fifty five okay. pounds, depending. So on that's it. but that's static. That's static. That's not up and down, though. I don't think. Yeah. So what about this? What about the opposite way? The cabinets stay on fixed the, on the ground. Yeah. I've seen that. The, I've seen that a bit too. The the tabletop rises and then here here's the kicker. Mm -hmm. The top of your cabinet isn't flat. It actually has almost like a, a border, a crown, if you will. So okay. that when you raise the desk up, you now have effectively like an extra like pocket or tray that you can put things hidden on. storage like hidden storage Ooh, I don't know. that's neat yeah yeah that's cool I don't know. so fully flush out the idea yeah the only problem with that is and it really this would apply to the other thing too is like it would limit your minimum height not that i think that's a big deal because like whatever you were you're never really going to want to slam it all the way to the floor right yeah you never want to go below like 30 yeah, exactly. So it's, I don't really think that's an issue. So yeah, yeah, I'm all and for I it. I mean, you could then build out your, you know, something around your legs to hide those as well. And then whenever they're up, yeah, you'll see that telescoping arm. But whenever it's down, it would just look like a nice wooden desk. Totally. Yeah, I think that's the goal is when it's down, it looks like a desk. Yeah. I don't necessarily know if there's a way while it's up for you to camouflage it as well oh you can maybe get one of those like peel and stick vinyl stickers that looks like wood and do that on the part that comes up with the rest on of the, the telescoping actual... part yeah uh -huh. that's yeah that's not a bad idea what about if i made my own veneer and epoxy steam bend it and epoxy it, it? yeah yeah that's mm. one way to go yeah mm. that's not a bad idea some interesting ideas it i've depends been on how much clearance you have with it as far as like, you know, rubbing against other parts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it could be interesting. I've been trying to pitch this because Flexi Desk, Flexi Spot is that who it is? Yeah. Yeah. They reach out to me like every three weeks. I know. I th I'd be Did you get the same thing? Yeah, totally. And then I'm just like, I sent it to Mark. I'm like, hey, Mark, they're reaching out again. And he, he, he sent me a message the other day. And he goes, Flexi Spot will literally be the death of me. He's like, they're the most difficult brand in the world to try to, like, communicate with. Yeah, but I see them working with, like, content creators on, like, the same roster. Like, it comes up in our, like, weekly emails. Like, some oh, I know. people are closing deals with them. Yeah, it's weird. I know. So, I've considered just getting one of buying the desk it itself. I know it's a quality product. Like... It's it's definitely up there. Like, I don't know, just buy the damn thing myself. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I did. I was like, I could wait for that sponsorship, but I was like, ah, you know what? Screw it. I just I want this thing. I think it's gonna make other projects go faster. So I just went and got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other thing I'm definitely gonna invest in is a new chair. Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause you gotta have some comfy, man. Yeah, get yourself a nice ergonomic chair. Go, but do what I did. I went to a store that had a bunch. And I just sat yeah. in a bunch of them. Like, so, like, what? How do I find this? So I go to like an office supply store. Or what? Yeah, office supply store. I went to. Uh, I liked the Herman Miller chair. I liked the look of it, so I went to the Herman Miller like showroom or whatever and mm -hmm. tried out some of theirs. Where else did I go? Um, if you're IKEA looking to cut, actually if, has some pretty decent ones. Yeah, and if you're looking to cut a little bit down, there's a lot of places that'll resell used office furniture and often you get something that has hardly been used and very good point yeah wait till a big tech company in your neighborhood goes out of business and then you can scoop up all the fancy chairs <laughs> didn't you pay something silly like a thousand dollars for that chair yep 
<laughs> I'm, la- yeah. I'm laughing because as somebody who's never bought an office chair, I'm like, that seems just nuts. That's yeah. what that's what a lot of like high end office chairs kind of go for. And the nice thing was, I bought that thing for a thousand bucks. I sold it for a thousand bucks two years later. Yeah. Really, the cheap so, office chair is like two hundred. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking on Flexi Spot, and and they're like four or five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a good, interesting. Definitely got a. I see now. I'm looking at these damn flexi spot desks too much. I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the desk I bought came out of the same factory as the flexi spot ones did. It looks damn near identical. I'm under. I'm under the impression that there are so few legitimately unique products that almost I. Like the vast majority of products on the market are white labeled. I'm telling you, man. I think I think you're right. I think you're very right. And it it kind of got me thinking about clothes. Like, yeah, how many? Like, you I don't know. You go to Old Navy. You go to Abercrombie. You go to whatever place at the mall. Mm-hmm. Do you think there are other brands that sell clothes that are from the exact same factory? There must be. I, I got into this weird TikTok rabbit hole of oh, here we go. watching guys go to different, um, they had like trade shows in China okay. of like, comp- they would basically like go to companies and these companies would have racks of like different things they could make, sweaters, backpacks. Sure. And they would, they would say, okay, I like this jacket that you have here but i want you to switch the arm material to this i want to put a custom logo on it and i want the inside to be embroidered with like this fabric sure and they'd be like okay yep we can do that and then they'd be like how what's like the you know what's the price per unit unit?" and then they just negotiate the cost and it's like super rapid fire Hmm. so but the thing is a lot of these uh people they'd be like oh yeah we make for puma we make for uh i don't know like ralph lauren we make for the, all these companies and be like part of their pitch would be like yeah we manufacture for all these like high-end clothing companies that you would recognize mm, but it's so. all made by the same company yeah so i think it's a little bit more customized than your like typical white label good but i think a lot of stuff comes out of the same factory huh. that makes sense and is like, and is maybe just like a slightly modified version of some stock design that they have. That's that's weird, though. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like, do you really think that a lot of these companies are, you know, building up their their own entire textile mills and all no. that kind of stuff? They're just they're design houses. Things? All they do is design, and then they mm-hmm. outsource the manufacturing. Makes sense. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. So. Well, speaking of design, I got a I got a question for you, Zach, and I don't know how much you know about this, but I figured with the the you know the home building background mm-hmm. and what appears to be in your office. So tell me about white walls. Okay. okay. What about them? Here's my question. Yeah. Do you just go to the store? Because, you know, painting walls white now is very, fairly popular. It's very mm-hmm. neutral. You can do whatever it's colors and stuff bright. you want with it. Yeah, it's bright. It makes the space look bigger. Do you go and just pick, like, white, white? Or do you do these whites no. that have the teeniest undertone? Oh, my friend, my friend. There are a million different types of white. And oh, the, type of, the type of white is very important. Okay. Uh, so... I've seen three major iterations of white. The big popular color probably like 10 years ago was called Distant Gray. And it was a Benjamin Moore color. They're all Benjamin Moore colors, by the way. Basically, everybody picks from the Benjamin Moore like yeah, yeah. swatch guide and then just gets it mixed in a different paint company. Um, so Distant Gray was the big one for a long time. Then it was uh, Cloud White. That was probably probably about like eight to four years ago. Okay. Uh, cloud white was like the most popular white color. And now the one that everybody's on to is uh, Chantilly Lace. Ooh. Yeah. Hold on five seconds. We have paint swatches. I'm curious if that's one of the ones in mine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please go get it. Chantilly Lace. Yeah, it's Jerry funny. Lewis, Jerry Lewis song. All oh, right. he's already back. 
I'm back. It's quick. Shantley yeah. Lace. Okay. Yeah. So we went to the to the depot mm-hmm. and picked out all of the shades of white. Okay. And then we were like, I don't even know if I can tell the difference between these. So I did get one suggestion from somebody. They said, get a pure white and a pure black swatch. Okay. And then, then you can kind of like like compare to see uh, like, yeah. oh, does it have blue? Does it have purple? Like what's sure. it look like on it? Yeah. So, sure. Our top th- uh, four contenders right now are Polar Bear. Oh, yeah. My friend's condo was done in Polar Bear. Okay. So paint that. Did yeah, it look all right? A- yeah, yeah, that's a popular one. It's I think Polar Bear is like a little cooler than a lot of the yeah. popular ones. Okay. Hence uh, Polar Bear, I guess. Nano cool lights, White. It's going to pop. Yeah. Sorry, what was the other one? Nano yeah. White. That I have not heard of. Whip- nano or Nana? Nano. 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 Okay. Whipped Cream. Oh. And Frost. Frost. Uh, I think maybe I've seen a little bit of Frost around, but definitely Polar Bear. I'm guessing oh. polar bear and frost have a little blue to them, and yeah. Nana and then the other one, and whipped cream, have little yellow tones to them. See when I sh- when I hold them up to the camera, you can't tell a damn difference between any of them. I <laughs> no, them. no, you can't. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure my office, and I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna uh, yeah, hold on. I just gotta change the white balance on my camera because it's set to a little cooler. There we go. So my office is Chantilly Lace, I'm pretty sure. Okay, okay. Because I found some old paint cans that said Chantilly Lace kicking around the house when we moved in. So you said you got a buddy that painted Polar Bear. Yeah, he liked it. Okay, okay. Honestly, dude, don't (laughs) kill yourself debating about which white. Like, you held up the swatches you can see that there's not really that big of a difference between them. But see, I mean, we are, all the three of us know this. No matter what we decide on picking, yeah, it's still my responsibility, and I'm going to be in trouble either way. Yeah, obviously. So just take it on the chin. <laughs> just pick one at random and be like, I'm going to get screwed for this, so whatever. Yeah, you just got to pick the one that's going to get rejected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I vote for this one. That one's ugly. Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll do this one. You got to give uh, give Miranda like three options. Two that you like and then one that's just like an obvious no. Oh. And then push your, be like, and you have to suggest the obvious no. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. And then well, she's going to be like, not that one, but yeah, this other one's good. And then you're- it, it, it really depends, though. I mean, if your wife is a bit of a pleaser and, you, and you're pushing the one you don't want, she may just go, yeah, okay, that one works too. And then True. you're stuck with the one you don't want. So True. I See, know. I'll probably get the, yeah, I mean, if that's what you want. Yeah. But she won't be happy about it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. right, right, right. So Chantilly Lace was the popular one. What was the other one that was fairly popular? Cloud White. Cloud and both of, both of those are slightly on the warmer side, I would say. They just have like a tinge of, I don't know, orange to them, I guess. Okay, okay. This pen sucks. I, uh, uh, OC43, I think that's the color code for, that's the bedroom work color code. That's for. it. Bananas. <laughs> Now, do the color codes tell you anything? Oh, no. OC43 is overcast. Damn it. Uh, that's a good question. I'm sure, yeah, to Benjamin Moore, like, chemist or whatever, they probably do mean something. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went to, to Home Depot what? and I was looking at all these paint swatches. I'm like, how the hell am I ever going to pick anything? But then I also got yeah. to thinking, I don't. I think it really matters all that much. I don't think it really matters. I mean, like, is your is, is your wall white or is it tan or is it gray? Okay, you can yeah. tell a difference between those. Yeah. I would say, you know, the nice thing about doing white is that it's very easy to paint over and it's very neutral, right? Yeah. So I'm a big fan of when you move into a place and you don't know what to do, just paint all the walls white and live in it for a little bit and then be like, okay, that room, I want to do an accent wall over here. And then... Then it's easy to paint over. Yeah. yeah. Don't pick any like 
specialty or limited colors, pick something that's been around for a while that's going to be around for a while. You don't want to have to hunt it down Ooh. again later. So something that's going to be easy to find again later. Yeah. So do you guys... It, do you guys have like a uh, like a like a note sheet on your phone of like I Actually, painted this room this? If you buy it at Home Depot and you give them your phone number in the paint section, they will log oh. the paint sample and what color it is, and you can put a note on there as far as what room you're putting it in. There's uh, also the trick of taking the light switches, the light switch plates off the wall, and writing it on the inside. And oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, this guy. <laughs> Generally, I keep the I you keep the remnants of whatever the old like it, like the can right. You're never gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. perfectly finish a can. Just write on it like you know description like bathroom walls, bathroom trim, okay, main house okay. trim, and then that way you know that way. That's how I usually do it. But be clear because you're gonna have to remember what your short True. can meant four or five yes. years later. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Uh. So and if you go yeah. with a white, don't go with something that's like super bright white. Definitely get something that's a shade or two down. Yes, I super agree. bright is just going to be over. It's just, it's going to be too much. It's going to be very yeah. bright. A little smack the shit out of you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and while we're on the subject of paint for a minute, let me go please. off on paints for a second. Don't get the cheapest paints. Oh, don't. Yeah. We, yeah, I, I told you my dad worked for Sherwin Williams for like right. 30 years. Okay, yeah, get, get, yeah, see if you can get you like a nice employee discount. Yeah, yeah on we the do. Sherwin, okay, perfect. Yeah, get the whatever the high end Sherwin Williams is, whatever they're scrubbable, Emerald you know, urethane or whatever. Yeah, the, exactly. The top one for yeah. the ceiling, we'll probably do duration, which is like a three out of four. I would assume the Sherwin Williams probably has a dedicated ceiling paint. Probably. That's pr probably even more flat than a typical flat paint. Oh. Yeah, it's, so it's better at hiding imperfections. Nothing is worse if you got some like big windows and the sun comes in and it hits the like it just hits the ceiling in the right way and you see the really crappy plaster job somebody did up there. You're like, oh. Oh, well, so, see, I'm learning something. So the ceiling, you said you want to go dedicated ceiling paint so it's super flat. As flat as, yeah, as flat as you can possibly get. Does that say green suitor sucks on the other side? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> that was a good one, Terry. <laughs> um, so, so let's talk about, uh, about more about paint. Okay. Gloss, semi-gloss, satin. What's like the go-to for walls these days? Flat, flat, matte, yeah. something like really? that. Nobody yeah. does semi-gloss anymore. No, semi-gloss mm -hmm. is for, like, trim and doors and stuff okay. like that. Sometimes your bathroom. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes the bathroom. I, even there, I don't like. People used to do semi-glosses and stuff like and satins in the bathroom because they thought it was easier to clean. And mm -hmm. in the past, they were right. But these new paints are so durable, you can scrub even in the, the bathroom. So it's not nearly as big of a deal. So as go it used with to be. matte and flat wall. See, my parents would always get semi gloss, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Why are these walls ref like reflective?" I always yeah, thought it was I, so I, weird. Yeah, like I don't like that. It's, it's like Zach said; it's an old old man old mentality of painting. Yeah. Okay. So I want yeah. matte or flat on the walls, and then the flattest thing possible on the ceiling. Ceilings, yeah. Um, if you like a color, I mean, if you're going to go with Sherwin Williams, this probably won't be an issue for you. But if you like a color and uh, for whatever reason, you can't find a kitchen and bath paint uh, in like the sheen you want or something like that. Any outdoor paint has all the same antifungal agents that a kitchen Ooh. and bath paint would use. So you can always use outdoor paint as, uh, for bathrooms and kitchens. Oh, hell yeah. This is yeah. good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. Huh. And then trim. I yeah. know you always go with the absolute most durable thing in the world because those are typically the places that get the most wear and tear what finish do you typically go on trim do you go with the same thing as as the wall depends i mean that is a look to do the same thing as the wall you can kind of that kind of minimizes the look of the trim right right if it's if it's the same texture a lot of people usually like to have the trim stand out a little bit so you do like a satin or a semi-gloss on the trim but would you do it the same color or do you go with the bright white on the trim i mean 
Ah, if you do a different sheen, it's going to appear brighter. Like it's okay, going to yeah. pop a little bit more. So unless you're doing like a, you know, a blue wall with a white trim or something like that. Right. But if you're going to just, if it's going to be like, I wouldn't do like a, a, a white wall and then like a slightly different shade of white for the trim. I think that might look a little weird. Okay. So let, if just, I did the Chantilly lace walls, hypothetically, you do the Chantilly lace trim as well? I would. That's, okay. but it, I mean, look, it's, it depends on how far away from white you're getting. Like if you can yeah. notice that there's, a, that it's not pure white, then you may want that white accent. But if they're yeah. so close that you can't tell from across the room, yeah, give them the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do trim same color, but typically you go with like a semi gloss on the trim. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. See, this is, this is all good things for me to know. I got to write this all down. Cause I'm like, I've never painted a whole place. I feel like you, I felt like you guys would have some good insight to that, but yeah. the one yeah. where they turn, where they become painters. <laughs> <laughs> the one where they paint a house. Yeah. Uh, I like the paint by numbers. Paint paint by numbers. Numbers, yeah. oh, shoot. So I did decide I'm absolutely doing poplar trim because I like looked up the price. I found Menards will deliver it for like a hundred bucks. I can oh, get like nice. several hundred feet of it and like 16 foot lengths. Yeah. And it's marginally more expensive than MDF trim. Like, Dude, you're, yeah, yeah, so much better. Poplar is even better than like pine. And, yeah. Yeah. So poplar is like a nice step up. Now, what do you think about the eight versus twelve versus sixteen foot sticks of trim? Is your uh, room eight, twelve, or sixteen feet wide? The yeah. I mean, the living room is massive. Yeah, you're gonna have to break that. If it's over fifteen, you're gonna have to break it up. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's definitely bigger than fifteen. Well, it's. I mean, the way to think about it is shorter sticks, easier to work with, but then you have mm -hmm. more joints. Yeah, um, so are, those pop. Yeah, yeah. You, Inevitably, like, your joint is gonna see is gonna show after a few years. You can glue it, you can nail it, you can fill it. Eventually, you're gonna have a little seam. Yeah, where it, it might look good on day one, but two years later, it, it will eventually show that seam. And through, obviously, so. still do the scarf joints on those. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Just put it together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, do you think it's like? I might as well get the biggest sticks. And then when I get to the smaller rooms, just like you just know that you're going to have to cut it. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. And you, a lot of the time what I'll do is like, I'll set up the saw. I'll get it all delivered outside. If it's a nice day, set up the saw outside, do your cuts outside, or at least your rough cuts outside and then bring them in. Yeah. And then that way, yeah. Uh, I don't know. That makes sense. But it's, sense. I also, you know, it, it's, Consider that if you're working with 16 footers and you have a wall that's 15 feet, you're going to set up your miter saw and you're going to have 15 foot of board on one side of the blade and then uh, one foot yeah. of board on the other side. And those are awkward cuts. They are very awkward cuts. So. so maybe what I need to do is go take a survey of like how many walls, like the average length. And if I have one wall that's 35 feet, just be like, okay, we'll just deal with a couple of seams on that wall. And then every other room in the house, it'll be so much easier if you have an eight foot stick or a 12 foot stick. Yeah. I would I say mean, that anything over 15 feet, like if you can get up to 16 feet lengths, then anything over 15 feet, just cut it in half and put the seam down the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yes and no. I mean, it, it really depends on the room. Oh, right? yeah. It depends on if you got if you got doorways or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or you have like, you know, if it's in the living room and you're like, I know we're going to put the couch there and then we can sure. hide the scene uh, behind the couch or something like yeah. that. So think about those things, too. But okay. in general, I do agree with you, Derek. Now, what do you how do you guys feel about the picking up your own material versus having somebody deliver it to you? I mean, it depends how much it costs, but it's yeah. almost always, I, the, whatever I've run the numbers, it's almost always makes more sense to have it delivered. Because yeah. I was thinking, of, like, if I spend $1,000 on trim for the house, yeah, it was like yeah. 150 bucks for them to deliver it. Yeah. Like 1%. 10%. Right, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was all day because my truck bed's only five and a half feet long with a tailgate down, call it six and a half feet. I got 12 foot sticks hanging out the back. I've got yeah. six or down the to, front. You're right. Yeah. Like I'll pay you a hundred and something dollars all day to deliver that. Yeah. And yeah. then I don't have to deal with the hassle of going to the store and, and picking it out and, and this and that, like start on, yep. a, on you know, yeah. It's yeah, always get it delivered, but so unless it's a pizza. Oh, dude, I hate pizza delivery. I hate oh, yeah. food yeah? delivery. Oh, yeah, it's oh, too I mean, expensive. It's too expensive. But what that's only that's that? only like a recent thing. It used to not be that expensive yeah. to have. It's yeah. never hot. Yeah, that too. Unless it's well, pizza. Pizza's the only thing that comes hot. Pizza, I feel like pizza companies have dialed it in. They know, they yeah. make those like specially made bags the size of their pies. They know oh, what they're doing. Man, they I need that know. for french fries. Yeah, they do. Do you know that they have like, a, there's a special oil that they spray on delivery fries that's supposed to keep them crispier and hotter for longer. I've never experienced it. They're always mushy. Yeah. They're always, yeah. yeah. Put too much oil on them, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. That or, I mean, off. it's like, you know, the oil helps, but if it's being mishandled by some horrible delivery company, then there's nothing you can do. Yeah. I So I think my disdain for food delivery comes from a mental phenomenon that I've discussed with my friends. I don't know if I've discussed this with guys with you. Have you noticed that, let's say you you're, you know you go out to dinner with, with, your, with your spouse and... You know, like you're eating your meal or whatever. Every bite that you take is is warm. Mm -hmm. Then when it gets to the end of the meal, like you literally just finished yours. Every bite you had was warm. And she goes, do you want the rest of this? And you naturally go, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it is stone cold because you weren't experiencing that gradual loss of temperature. Mm, yeah. So if I go okay. pick up a pizza... First of all, I'm eating a slice on the way home. That's right. That, that's a free pizza. Meal. That's like that. That's your delivery fee. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So then I'm in, I'm enjoying that piece of pizza as the temperature gradient lowers. Yes. And af once I get home, I take another slice out, and this slice is actually warmer than the one I was just eating. So to me, this pizza is piping hot. That's yeah. That's like a free pizza. It's like bonus pizza slices. Yeah. But if yeah. somebody brings this pizza home to me and I take a bite of it, I'm like, ah, pizza's already kind of cold. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys I experienced guess it is, this? It is all relative. Have you ever done the move where you get the delivery and then you pop it in the oven for oh, like baby. five minutes just to reheat it a little bit? Yeah. 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 I, I think it works with some foods. I think it probably would work particularly well with pizza. But yeah. uh, I, I, I guess I must live in a lucky location because we don't really get a lot of cold pizzas being delivered. I find most of the time when I get a pie delivered, it's piping hot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I got another question for you guys. Okay. Where do you stand on preheating the oven? <sighs> I don't Typically know, in the after show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think so. I think a lot of the. I'll just throw stuff in the oven a lot of the time. Oh, I preheat psycho. it. I let it cycle uh, once after the preheat too. It's a. It depends what's what I'm making. If I'm reheating leftover pizza, I'm like, oh, screw true. it. Oh, I yeah, just dial it in. I put it in right away. Yeah. If I'm like baking a turkey dinner, it's like, okay, maybe I'll let it preheat then. It's like the seriousness. Or if, if I'm like yeah. baking cookies or like baking a pie. Oh, it's got to be yeah, just well, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a that's different a science. Yeah. yeah. But if I'm just reheating or, you know, like throwing, like what? Well, I'm trying to think of a good example. Making some well, no, like, a, like a baking sheet nachos. Like. I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I just throw that shit in and crank it. Right. Good to go. Good to go. <laughs> yeah. But if I you're have a, uh, making a souffle or you're making muffins or, you know, something like that, like I'm preheating all day. Yeah, if it requires precision, then I'm preheating. And it's funny because I have a gas oven now and that thing preheats in like a minute, maybe two minutes at most. Oh, does so it's it not really? even like, oh, dude, it's so fast. It's not even like that big a deal. We had this electric one at our old place. And I swear to God, that thing would take 30 minutes to prove. Yes! <laughs> and sometimes, 
Oh, that's like crazy. sometimes we would be get we would like sit down to make a meal together and be like, okay, we can't do like. There were a number of times where we aborted making a dinner and just ordered food because the preheat was going to take so long. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I got to the point where like I'll invite you know friends or like my parents over for dinner, and yeah. they'll like text us like, "Hey, we're on our way over. Preheat the oven," because they know yes. it takes so long. Yeah. It takes them like twenty five minutes to get here. Uh, see, Electric ours, ovens are the worst. Our home came with a smart oven. Oh, okay. the Wi-Fi, and you can oh. preheat. The problem with it is, is it's got a touchscreen display that is right above okay. the door. So whenever Ooh. you're going to pull food out, it creates steam, right? And that steam yeah. hits that touchscreen, and that touchscreen goes bananas. <laughs> how, does, how did it? How did it ever make it through QA? I don't that know, but it drives me insane. That's crazy. Oh, so you My get one pull. Insane. My parents have got a touchscreen on theirs, and it's infuriating because it's so laggy. So you yeah. have to like oh. scroll to pick the temperature, and it'll be like, eh, eh, eh. I, can't, I, am, I can't stand it, man. I am like the biggest tech guy. I love tech. I don't want any goddamn tech in my goddamn kitchen. No, I don't <laughs> no. I, I, I keep it simple. There, like physical buttons. Like, give me a dial. I don't, Yep. Yeah, like I don't even know what these smart fridges do, where they have like an LCD screen on Please. the outside of it, and it's yeah, it's insane. It's another point of failure. That's all it is. Yeah, I guess so. Or have you so. seen the ones that you can you can go like knock knock on it, and then oh, it, and like, it turns, becomes yeah. transparent, and you can see yeah. what's inside your fridge. Open the fucking door. Fucking door. Yeah. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, look, I'm glad we got the explicit out of the way early because we are <laughs> fired up about the kitchen. All right. Acid. Yeah. However, if if the only thing is that my if my oven is Wi-Fi connected and I can turn it on, totally uh -huh. game with that. Like a smart yeah. dishwasher, who cares? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a smart uh, clothing clothes washer and dryer. Oh now, man, I the only in thing our old place, dryer. I would like if it was like, hey, dryer's done. Do you want me to keep spinning it? I wouldn't mind that. So your stuff doesn't get. Oh ranked. yeah, but the thing is, okay. The thing is, all these smart appliances they have these goddamn humidity sensors in the dryer yes. that shuts the dryer off when it thinks the clothes are dry. But it's always I the number of times We're my dryer has up. gone off. <laughs> <laughs> the number of times my dryer's gone off and like the clothes are all dry, and then I pull out a bunch of soggy socks. Yeah, it's insane. It's every single time. Wait, so I had to go the in. Bamboo socks from. Uh from bad workwear no no they're just those the, ones the never try either <laughs> oh yeah yeah interesting interesting no they're just normal cotton socks whatever everybody else has yeah oh. and then the thing is it, it, it dad who's in the chat he's like yeah i've got to run my dryer twice i can't even run it twice because it already thinks it's dry so i have to like go into the bypass mode where you force it to run for 15 minutes uninterrupted at the end this it's is so it's so how, how are we supposed to live with these dumb appliances? I don't know. I don't know. I'm fired up on appliances right now. <laughs> I'm trying to think about what else in my house sucks. <laughs> oh, oh, what else? What else makes me mad? Um, I have an air fryer now. I, so I have a combination air fryer microwave, which I thought I was like, oh, this is going to be sick. This is going to eliminate one appliance from it my house. It sucks at both jobs. It's pretty good. It's a good microwave, but it sucks as an air fryer. Yeah. And it needs to preheat the air fryer. And it, t it takes three minutes to preheat the air fryer before you, before you use it. It doesn't seem very long. You know what I wouldn't uh, mind as a smart appliance is if my hot water heater from my house was connected to my phone and I could adjust the temperature. That would be nice. Yeah, true. You got to get an on demand system. I ever man. adjusted my hot water tank. Great way to save money. Time. Yeah, great way to save money. Because if your water is coming out of the tap scalding hot, which I know it is in a lot of homes, uh, there's no reason for that. When do you ever need scalding uh, water that is so hot that it near hurts boiling? You? Yeah, when do you ever need that? So turn down your water heater. Not only right. are you going to save more money, but you won't be accidentally burning yourself and save if, life on your water heater the, too. Is the wife going to kill me if I do that though? She went, "Why the water's not hot enough?" <laughs> Just tell her to crank it ten percent hot or whatever. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm adding this on my list of things to do. But you know what you should do, Eric, when you get your new house is you should not have a water heater. You should have a on demand system. 
so don't That's get nice. me started with all these projects. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Well, genuinely, what's the advantage of the tankless system? Where if two people are living in this place, you're never going to run through. But it's water. more efficient because you're not yeah. keeping this tank of warm water just warm all the time. Yeah. So, so it only the, heats it when you need it. What's yeah. the cost to get a tankless versus a tank? Like a tank water heater is what, like seven hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks. Yeah, a tankless system is like maybe twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, it's not much more. So you basically, can, yeah. once our water heater goes to shit, just make it a tankless. Yeah, yeah. And but if get, you're uh, a point of access on like your whatever's furthest away, uh, like in our old house, we had tankless, and the kitchen was really far away, so it took a while for the hot water mm, to get there, which wouldn't have yeah. mattered if it was tankless or, or tanks Tank, or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. But you can get a point. Uh, this particular uh, tankless system had a point of uh, use add-on that you could get, and the, the two would work in sync. So then the point of use would go off once the hot water reached it. So you'd have hot water instantly, and then that point of use one would cut itself off whenever the hot water from the, the tankless system finally reached up there. Mm. So it's kind of nice because you instantly have hot water. Yeah, there's, uh, there's also some systems that will circulate the water in the hotline. Everyone, that like if it drops yeah. below a certain temperature threshold, it'll circulate, it'll heat it up. So, yeah. so you always have hot water like right away. But I mean, honestly, we have tankless in our place now and it's like you run the tap for the exact same amount of time you would run yeah. it if it was, yeah, a tank system. See, as I, I don't know, rewind 10 years. And I was like, God, why do people care so much about water heaters and windows yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that? And now I'm like genuinely jazzed about this. Like, hey, let's talk yeah. about water heaters, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you're in full dad mode, huh? <laughs> Even without kids. I got to get a pair of those white leather shoes to mow the lawn into. <laughs> oh, yeah. Real yeah, you're going to have to get a bunch of more yard. I guess we talked about that last week, but you're going to have to get a bunch of more yard working tools. I was looking to get a lopper today. Have you ever seen a lopper? Cindy what? lopper? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a chainsaw had a baby with a like a like I don't even know what to call those things. Like a pair of shears. Like a big pair of shears mm -hmm. and a chainsaw had a baby. Is it is it a manual? Thing? No, it's brand? no, it's like a no, it's like a type of tool. I, uh, like I just get garden. big shears. Okay, they're yeah, like, but like, they're like massive shears, basically. They're like with a chainsaw blade, and they're electric. So oh. instead of having to like clamp down on stuff, you can just do a one hand, and mm. you can just cut branches in half real quick. Does Dewalt make one? Uh, Craftsman does for sure, because that's the one I was thinking about getting. I don't know if DeWalt does. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, oh, I it's see an Electric it. lopper. Yeah, try Yeah, electric lopper. Cordless electric chainsaw. That thing is nuts. The alligator lopper. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That looks that's pretty that's my... Because I'm taking down all these branches to get yeah. it more... I got a I got tree cover blocking some of the upstairs bedroom windows. So I was out there with my chain pole saw today cutting down branches. But then the the branches get down on the ground and you got to cut them up so that you can put them in a yard waste bag to get rid of them. And I was doing it with a pair of little shears with my hand. I was like this is taking forever and it sucks. So if I had the lopper I could just oh, man. But Steve, it's you got to be fun. careful with that cuz you don't want to be like a girl in the early 2000s with her eyebrows you know you start taking one true. branch off and then all of a sudden you have no tree there true true <laughs> i'm pretty lucky in that the trees are quite old on my property so i'm just cutting like the the lower branches off and then they still got tons up top well oh, the dude. good news is you got plenty of wood glue if you do cut them short so yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you take off the branch Oh, just glow so that back on. Like, Zach, what the hell? And you'd be like, oh, I'll just glue it back. 
I'd be like, fun fact, wood glue is actually as strong as the internal joints of the tree itself. <laughs> wood glue is stronger than the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would be such a good YouTube video. <laughs> like everybody says wood glue is stronger than the wood itself, so I'm going to cut down this tree and reassemble it. I, I'm going to actually move this tree to my backyard by trimming it and gluing it back together. <laughs> You do have to be careful, though, because it is very satisfying to cut branches off of trees. Yeah. So I can see why people would go too far. It is, it's tough to know when to stop. Well, let me ask you this. As somebody who, one, doesn't own a Sawzall uh -huh. and also doesn't own any, like, branch cutting equipment, yeah. do I just go out and just buy a Sawzall to start? Because I feel like that's probably more versatile from the get-go. I guess so. I would get... Uh, I mean, I, I would need to see your property. I get a lot more use out of my electric chainsaw than I do the Sawzall when it comes to okay. yard work. I could see that. Yeah. The Sawzall is more for like demo stuff. I mean, it'll work to take down trees. It's not going to be as oh. fast though. Yeah. The, the, the chainsaw is just like goes, cuts right through it like butter. Whereas the Sawzall, you're there for, you know, 30 seconds to cut through a branch. I find when I'm trying to use a Sawzall on a tree, the tree's wet. And it'll sometimes yeah. grab that sawzall, and then the whole true. thing just shakes. Yeah, true, true. The sawzall is really meant for dry wood. I think. I don't yeah. think it does. For whatever reason, it doesn't do well with wet wood. Yeah. Either way, I'm sure I can talk her into buying some sort of sort of tree trimming apparatus. Yeah. Yeah. Get one from your Milwaukee buddy. Yeah. I know. Well, I know. That's. I, wow. I gotta have a more thorough conversation with him, so I'm not abusing. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like uh, that guy's got a lot of phone calls for me lately. I know. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm speaking of phone months, calls, but... we are going to jump over to the after show. But before we do, well, the reason I said phone calls, because I got to get on a phone call at 845. So we want to make sure we can get the after show in. Yeah, let's get that. But, yeah, but yeah. before we do that, we want to give a huge shout out to all of our returning top tier patrons. Uh, Dadu apparently you know, figured out how to use the Canadian banking system. So he's Whoa. back. Hell yeah. 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 Uh, we got Josh at Sawdust Builds, Corey Duvall, Dan R. Mendres, Goblin Spanker, and of course, Joe Welsh at Delaware Valley Workshop. Yes, sir. So join us over on the after show. Go to patreon.com slash off the cut podcast. Get access to all kinds of stuff like our BYOC call that we are having next week on the 27th where you get to nice. hang out live with us video chat and we just you know shoot shit about whatever you want to talk about mm -hmm. without further ado everybody we're heading over to the after show we will see you there or we'll see you next week see you everybody later